All right, guys, let's do this thing. Let's warm up America. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today, especially for this video where I am starting a campaign to help the Warm Up America Foundation. The Warm Up America Foundation is actually an umbrella charity that helps so many other charities out and more. Whatever charity just calls out to Warm Up America for help, they are instantly there to help out. And what I love most about the Warm Up America Foundation, the charity, is that they ask for or very specific things so you know exactly what to make you are given direction to know exactly what is needed and I just really appreciate that about their foundation about their charity Evie Rosen began the warm-up America foundation back in 1991 this year they are celebrating their 30th year anniversary and I thought what a great idea but to start this year with a bang with a great big campaign celebrating Evie Rosen, the Warm Up America Foundation and how they began. So how the Warm Up America Foundation began, how Evie Rosen actually began this charity was by she showed people how to knit. She owned a little knit shop and she would have them knit or crochet seven inch wide by nine inch tall rectangular sections. That's it. So I cut that out in a cardboard piece showing you exactly what seven inches wide by nine inches tall looks like. It's just this little piece right here. And what she would do is she'd take those sections that people would knit or people would crochet and she would sew those sections together meeting whatever need was out there. If people needed baby blankets, she would sew enough of these rectangular sections together to make the size of a baby, a baby blanket or if they needed a child size blanket, or if they needed a lapgan for the elderly, or an adult throw blanket for the homeless, or if there was a natural disaster that wiped out a whole neighborhood or a whole section where people were in need of blankets, adult blankets, she would just take these rectangular sections, sew them together, and make whatever blanket size was needed and that was so incredible so that's what we're going to do with this campaign is we are going to make seven inch wide by nine inch tall rectangular sections and that's it I'm actually going to show you two different crochet stitches that might get you excited to make all these rectangular sections I'm going to show you the seed stitch and I'm going to show you the trinity stitch if you are an absolute beginner, you're really going to like the seed stitch. It's very beginner friendly. If you want a little more of a challenge or want to try something different, I have the Trinity stitch over here. You can do both. You can stick to just one. You can make as many as you want. My goal is to get 5,000 rectangular sections sent in to Warm Up America by February 15th. That way they can accomplish at least 100 adult blankets to help 100 adults. It's amazing how 5,000 rectangular sections will only make 100 blankets. But still, that's 100 blankets that they could make. That's 100 blankets that could go to people that need them, that are in need, that, that need that blanket, especially in the winter, super cold months, and everything that's happening from 2020 there are a lot more people in need of those blankets. So the deadline that I'm going to have is February 15th. I'm going to end this campaign February 15th. So we need to get all of these rectangular swatches in fast. And I put that date because that will still give Warm Up America enough time to receive these rectangular sections, sew them together, and get them out to the people during these cold winter months. It still gives them time to accomplish this this year. And so that's my big push. And honestly, guys, these whip up so fast. And when I talked to April, the Warm Up America coordinator, she was saying, use your scrap yarn. Use your leftover yarn that you have from projects that are just stashed somewhere. Um, so this is great. Let's clean up our yarn stashes. Let's use up all of our scrap yarn. Start the new year with a clean slate. It's, I mean, what better way to use up your scraps than to create a rectangular section that can be sent into charity? 
It's awesome. It's so great. So where are you going to send it? When you are finished making your rectangular section, however many you want to make, go ahead and send it to this address here on the screen. Make sure that at the very bottom of the address, you put attention dot dot hooked for hope. They actually do count how many sections are sent in dedicated to a particular campaign, dedicated to a particular charity. They count them and I will be able to know exactly how many rectangular sections were, were mailed to the Warm Up America Foundation because they keep count. And that's how I will know if we met our goal of 5,000 or not. But either way, I'm hoping to just get them as many as they can receive, as many as we can do. And what I'm thinking is if we can just make one, if, if everybody that watches this video can just make one seven inch by nine inch rectangular section and mail it to Warm Up America, we will have surpassed my 5,000 goal. So I will put timestamps on each video for the seed stitch and for the Trinity stitch. So that way you can speed through the video. You can fast forward. You can hop straight to where you want to be. The seed stitch starts here. The Trinity stitch will start here. In the notes section, comment section below, I will include more timestamps. That way you can see, okay, row one or step one, row two or step two. That way you can just get straight to exactly where you want to go, especially if you start with one stitch and maybe later on decide to try a different stitch. Sound good? All right, let's go ahead and dive right into the seed stitch and get started. The materials that you're going to want to use for the seed stitch and this seven by nine inch rectangular section for Warm Up America, you're going to want to use a size four weight worsted medium Aran size yarn preferably in a yarn that is easy to wash. We don't want to use anything that requires really specific care instructions because we aren't sure where this blanket is going to go or the needs that it's going to meet. So just make sure that whatever yarn you are choosing to use is really easy to wash. You're also going to want a crochet hook that is a size H8 or five millimeter crochet hook a pair of scissors, a measuring tape, just to make sure that you are keeping with your dimensions of seven inches wide by nine inches tall, and a yarn needle or tapestry needle to help you weave in your ends at the end, cleaning up the entire section. All right, once you have got all of your materials, let's move right into actually doing the seed stitch. To begin, I'm going to give myself a long enough tail so I can weave in my ends at the end of the project create my slip knot, take my crochet hook, attach my crochet hook, and I am ready to go. To begin, I'm going to chain 26 chains. One, two, three, four, 25, 26. Great. Okay, so if you are looking at your foundation row chain here, so my foundation row chain measures out to seven inches. If you're finding that your chain was longer than my chain, or if your chain was shorter than my chain, this multiple chain count requirement for the seed stitch is in a multiple of two, okay? So I made 26 chains, but if you found that you are short, you might make 28 chains or 30 chains. If your foundation row chain was longer than mine, you might make 24 chains or 22 chains, but you want to make sure that the number of chains in your foundation row is in a multiple of two for this pattern to work. For row one, we're going to single crochet in the second chain from our crochet hook. So looking at our V's, not including the loop on our crochet hook. So we got one V, two, going to insert our crochet hook in that second chain and make a single crochet. Perfect. We're going to chain one, skip a chain, and single crochet in the next chain. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, 
single crochet in the next. Okay, repeat this pattern all the way across to the very end. I will meet you at the end of row one to show you what to do next. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, very last chain, we will single crochet into. Perfect. At the end of row one, we're going to chain one, turn our work, and we are ready for row two. For row two, we're going to single crochet in the very first stitch, and then we're going to single crochet in that chain one space. And then we're going to chain one, skip that single crochet stitch, and make a single crochet in that chain one space. Chain one, skip the single crochet, and make a single crochet in that chain one space. And repeat, chain one, skip, single crochet in the chain one space. Okay, repeat this pattern all the way across row two, and I, I will meet you at the end of row two to show you what we do next. Chain one, skip uh, the single crochet, single crochet in the chain one space, and at the very end of row two, we're going to single crochet in the very last stitch as well. Chain one, turn our work. We are now ready for row three. Row three, we're going to single crochet in the very first stitch. Okay, for every single row that you make with the seed stitch, you will single crochet in the very first stitch for every single row. Then you look at the next stitch. If the next stitch is a chain one, you will single crochet in the chain one space. If the next stitch is a single crochet, then you will chain one to hop over that single crochet and single crochet in the chain one space. Chain one, skip over the single crochet and single crochet in the chain one space. With this pattern, you never put a single crochet on top of another single crochet in the middle of the project. You only do that for the very first stitch and for the very last stitch. In the middle of the project, you will hop over the single crochet by chaining one and then make a single crochet stitch in the chain one space. That is the pattern through the entire section. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the chain one space. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the chain one space. Let's go ahead and finish row three, and then I will show you how to count your rows and how many rows you will need to finish off this swatch. All right, so chain one, skip one, and I will single crochet in the very last stitch here. Perfect, okay, so that concludes my row three. To count your rows, you will just look at the V stitches or the single crochet stitches of each row. So beginning with our foundation row chain, so here is our foundation row. If we separate this out a little bit, you'll be able to see the single crochets and the chain ones. So there's my single crochet, so that's row one, single crochet, row two, single crochet, row three. So I will actually just count my single crochets in a diagonal zigzag, so one, two, three, and I'll keep counting, and that is your rows. Row one, row two, row three, all the way up. You will need to accomplish 36 rows to meet your nine inch tall section. Use your ruler, use your tape measure. Make sure to start at the very bottom and measure up to nine inches. If 
the material that you are using when you are done with row 36 and you measure you are over the nine inches, then just take out a few rows until your rectangular section is nine inches tall. If your, your yarn is thinner or just different than what I was using and you get to row 36 and you are not hitting a nine inch long measurement, then add a few more rows until you have met that nine inch tall measurement. But I was able to meet nine inches with 36 rows. Here is one section that I made where I was using up scrap yarn. Here is the other section that I made where I was able to do one whole solid rectangular section with the same color. And that's it. This is the finished work. This is what it'll look like. And that is the seat stitch. The materials that you're going to need to make the Trinity Stitch 7 by 9 inch rectangular section, you're going to need yarn, size 4 weight worsted, medium, Aran size yarn, in a yarn that is easy to wash, okay? A crochet hook, size H8, 5 millimeters. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a measuring tape or ruler to make sure that you are hitting dimensions of 7 inches wide by 9 inches tall and a yarn needle, tapestry needle to weave in your ends to clean up your rectangular section. That's all you're going to need for materials. So let's go ahead and dive right into how to actually do the Trinity Stitch. We begin by starting with a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. Create your slip knot, attach your crochet hook, and we are ready to go. We want to begin by chaining 28 chains. One, two, three, four, 26, 27, 28. Perfect. So this stitch, the Trinity stitch, is worked in a multiple of two. So if you are needing to add more chains or subtract chains to meet dimension of your seven inch wide rectangular section, you just want to make sure that you're able to meet the multiple stitch count requirement of two. To begin row one of the Trinity stitch, we're going to single crochet in the second chain from our crochet hook. The next stitch is actually a single crochet three tog. We're going to reinsert our crochet hook in the same chain that we made our first stitch in. Yarn over. Pull through. In the next chain, we're going to insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. And in the following chain, we're going to insert our crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. You should have a total of four loops on your crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through all four loops. Chain one and repeat. Insert your crochet hook into the very same stitch that already had, it was your last single crochet pull through. Yarn over, pull the yarn through that same stitch. Next chain, insert your crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. Next chain, insert your crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. You will stop when you have four loops on your crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through all four loops, chain one, and repeat. Insert your crochet hook into the same chain that your last stitch was in. Yarn over, pull through. Insert your crochet hook into the next chain. Yarn over, pull through. Insert your crochet hook into the next chain. Yarn over, pull through. We have four loops on our crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through all four loops. Chain one. Repeat this pattern all the way across row one and I will meet you at the end of row one to show you what to do next. Okay, 
inserting my crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, next chain, third chain, got my four loops, yarn over, pull through all four loops. Now when we come to the very end of the row, very end of row one or the very end of any row, we do not chain one, we just single crochet in that very last chain again to close it off. That's it. All right, to move on to the next row, we will just chain one, turn our work. For each row, this is a repeat, so for each row, you're going to single crochet in the very first stitch. The next stitch you're going to do is the Trinity stitch. So insert your crochet hook back into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, insert your crochet hook into the second stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then insert your crochet hook into the top of this third stitch. Sometimes I have to use my claw lifting up that one yarn, yarn over, pull through. I have my four loops on my crochet hook, yarn over, pull through all four loops, and chain one. You will find that you really want your tension to be loose with this stitch, so that way you can identify the stitches in the row below to insert your crochet hook into. Okay, it's really, really important for your stitches to be loose here and not super tight. Okay, we're going to insert our crochet hook into the same stitch, the last stitch that we put a stitch into. Yarn over, pull through. Next stitch, insert crochet hook, yarn over, pull through. Last stitch will always be this one single yarn that we will use our claw if necessary. Yarn over, pull through, four loops, yarn over, pull through all four loops, chain one. That is the repeating pattern, guys. You will repeat this pattern for a total of 28 rows. And at that point, you should be at that nine inch long range. I actually waited a couple rows in to measure my length dimension because I noticed this stitch did actually pull back a little from my foundation row. So once you get a few rows in, you will notice it hits that seven inch mark. But again, just do whatever you can. Do what you can to meet dimension for those rectangular sections. It's super important to meet that seven inch wide by nine inch long dimension, just so that way those rectangular sections can be sewn together. All right, that is it guys. Let me go ahead and get to the end of row two so I can show you again how to end a row, how to begin a row, and then the rest is exactly like this. It's just a repeat. One, two, three, then yarn over, pull through all four loops. Chain one. One, two, three, four loops here. Yarn over, pull through all four, chain one. That's it. Chain one. Oh, last Trinity stitch. One, two, three. Yarn over, pull through all four loops. And because it's the last stitch, I do not chain one. I just single crochet in that last stitch again. And that creates that 90 degree angle that gives you a really nice edge. So here is the pattern. What you would do after ending every row, you just chain one, turn your work, and again, each row will begin by single crocheting 
in the first stitch and then making the Trinity stitch. Chain one. Perfect. Okay, so how you count your rows? This is going to be a question that will definitely need to be answered. If you look close enough to the work, you will see little sections, little tiny sections here. So this section and then this little section, they look kind of like little beads. So this would be indicating row one. And then the next section on top, you'd be able to identify as row two. Now let me go ahead and show you finished work pieces. Here's the Trinity stitch that I did with a bunch of scrap yarn. A lot of fun. Again, use up those scrap yarn pieces. This is the Trinity stitch I used with a solid color. And if you can identify, if I can zoom in enough to the project, you will see these lines line, 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 line. So between each line is two rows. Okay, so there's another way of identifying your rows. But again, find the Trinity, the three single crochet tog. So there's one and then two and then three four. So you'll be able to count your rows. If you really look, you'll be able to identify those little bead shape, three single crochet togs that have been, the three single crochets have been closed together. You'll be able to identify those and count one, two, three, four, all the way to the end of row 28. So there is the Trinity stitch. I hope you really liked the seed stitch and the trinity stitch. If you would like to use a completely different stitch to make your seven inch by nine inch rectangular section, go for it. Use whatever stitch you like best. I just recommend you have your tape measure handy. That way you can make sure that you're meeting seven inches wide by nine inches tall. These rectangular sections, they're, they need to be that dimension so that they can all sew together very well. I will include the website to Warm Up America here at the bottom of the screen if you would like to check out their other charities and see what other needs are being asked for. I love their website. It's super easy to follow. I love getting direction and knowing what things to make to really help individual charities. You can also donate to Warm Up America to support their charity and just keep them going. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you make your rectangular section to help out or a baby blanket to donate or a beanie or a scarf or gloves or anything that you enjoy making, they have a use for. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.